Hello, welcome. Welcome to the session of services in high rise buildings for the E P G Patshala. Today we are going to look at something which is extremely basic. As the name itself will tell you, it is basic systems of air conditioning. Basically, the air conditioning systems are, as I mentioned, cycles. The most popular cycles are the vapor compression, the vapor absorption, and the air cycle. The vapor compression cycle is the one that is most commonly used. It is the one that you see in every piece of equipment, including the home refrigerator that you may be using. The vapor absorption cycle is characterized by a very different parameter in the fence that it uses heat to power its uh, work and the air cycle is something which is very very uh, restrictive in its use it is used perhaps very commonly in aircraft any air conditioner is basically a pump instead of pumping water it pumps heat the heat is absorbed by the heat pump and it is rejected by the heat pump as you can see in the diagram, the air conditioner is portrayed just as a pump. The most basic thing to do is to size the pump and the sizing of the pump is done to match the heat flow that is expected into the AC space. The AC space is characterized as an enclosure in a room where you have internal loads, where you have external loads coming in. For instance, the internal load could be any equipment, could be people and could be lights. Likewise, the external heat loads could be solar radiation, the actual temperature difference between outside and inside and of course, the fresh air that you would normally take for such an application. If the AC space needs 100 tons of cooling, you would naturally, you would naturally need a pump of 100 tons capacity. The 100 ton is sized as a very common unit of refrigeration air conditioning. I suppose it is very familiarly known that a ton of air conditioning is the same heat as one would get from the melting of one ton of ice for a whole day. For instance, if you have a one ton air conditioner at home and it fails you have nothing, uh, I mean you have no way of setting it right but you still need cooling then all you need to do is order one ton of ice from the nearby ice factory and in one full day of it melting you will get the same cooling that that small box was doing for you. Just imagine that's the kind of capacity that you're talking of when you say one ton of air conditioning. Take a simple enclosure. If there is an enclosure which needs say 100 tons of air conditioning 100 tons of air conditioning will need 100 ton pump. Now, how does one pump out heat? A pump everybody knows can be centrifugal, reciprocating and we are familiar that you know it pulls out the fluid from a receptacle and puts it into another receptacle. Now, here heat is something which is available all over the place and you have got to remove it from a restricted area, from a room which is to be air conditioned. How do you pump it out? Never forget that heat is a form of energy. So, obviously destroying it is going to be not a possibility. To effect this form of pumping, one goes back to his basics, one goes back to his physics where you know we looked at the laws of thermodynamics. The laws of thermodynamics said heat is a form of energy and it just cannot be destroyed. It also clarified to say that heat can move and will move from a higher potential to a lower potential. There is one extremely important factor about heat that it is an extremely dynamic form of energy. It never can rest, it keeps on moving, keeps on moving. It is this characteristic of heat moving or being able to move from a higher potential to a lower potential by use by an air conditioner manufacturer. How does he do it? How does he put this form to use? How will you keep 
an air conditioned space like let us say in Chennai, air conditioned at 24 degrees when the ambient is 40, we know that heat can be pumped only from a higher potential to a lower potential. So, how does a room of 24 degrees lose heat to a room to an ambient of 40? Is it possible? It is just like saying, you know, if I get a cup of coffee on my table, it's cold and I want it heated and I just wish for it to get heated. Will it get heated? Obviously not because the ambient is cooler and my, my coffee cup will only tend to cool, it will never get to get heated. When I expect air conditioning to affect a 40 degree ambient to be cooled down to 24 degrees, it is exactly similar to expecting a cup of coffee to become warm on my table. How does this get affected? How do you keep an ambient of 40 degrees, bring it down to 24 degrees? This is very simply done by getting a device which has two ends, a cold end and a hot end. In the moment you have a device like that, all you need is to put the cold end in the room which is to be cooled and keep the hot end in the ambient. Obviously, it follows that the cold end is colder than the room and the hot end is hotter than the ambient. The moment that happens, the law of thermodynamics takes over. The moment you have a cold end inside the room, the room loses energy, loses its heat into the cold end of the object you have placed. Within the object, a miracle takes place and the heat is transferred to the hot end. The hot end is hotter than the ambient and has absolutely no difficulty in rejecting the heat into the ambient. Figuratively, this would look like what you see in front of you. You have a hot end which is kept in the ambient and you have a cold end which is kept in the room which is air conditioned. In a box form, this dotted line that you see here is your room to be air conditioned. You have a cold end, it's a box. What does it do? It picks up the heat. This internal device which you see here connecting the cold end to the hot end is the medical maker and here you have the outdoor unit which affects the heat rejection. That box which you saw inside the cold end and this box which you saw outside the hot end takes on this kind of format. In the inside you see something like a coil which is you know practically like the radiator in a car, air is moved over this and this is kept colder than the room of 24 degrees. This is around maybe 7 to 8 degrees centigrade. So from 24 heat moves into this 7 to 8 degrees cooling media. This media transfers the media into the compressor which or rather it is pulled by the compressor and the compressor sends it back into another coil which is kept outside which is again like the radiator of a car and the fan blows the heat out into the ambient. So you have here an outdoor unit which is kept outside the room and you have an indoor unit which is kept inside the room. The basic requirements of this cycle as you saw in the earlier sketch were an evaporator which is the cold end and a condenser which is the hot end and to move the media, the refrigerant from here to here it is the compressor which does the job. This is the basic device which absorbs the energy and moves the fluid from the evaporator to the condenser. I would go to the extent of saying that to make this successfully possible, it is a marriage between a chemical engineer and a mechanical engineer. The mechanical engineer produces efficient compressors, produces devices which can compress media compress refrigerant properly and the chemical engineer comes up with devices with fluids which can be compressed easily. I mean the compression ratios are very small so that at its higher pressure it is hot and at its lower pressure it is cold. So the magic is basically a refrigerant which at a lower pressure is cold and at a higher pressure is hot and the compressor is one that keeps the media at low pressure and a high pressure to achieve its job properly. Basically, all these systems that you see have these three components as an essential requirement. Basically, the evaporator has to be there, 
the condenser has to be there and the compressor is the one that links the two. How they are put together is, uh, is what forms a system. Let us look at basic systems that one can have in air conditioning. The ones that you commonly see using the vapor compression cycle are the most basic form a window air conditioner. The next one is a split air conditioner which is basically as the word says a split of the two. Next you have a ductable split which is a larger version of this and you also have the larger version of the three devices put together which is called a central DX unit. This particular unit has a handicap that it is a single zone device and when it is to be used for multi zone applications this gives way to a central chill water system. The most basic form as I mentioned earlier is the window air conditioner. Now a window air conditioner is system wise mounted like this. There is an enclosure that has got to be cooled. The ambient is at 40 degrees. You have a window air conditioner which is fitted in a window as its name implies. A little portion of it is inside and a little portion of it is outside. This system one might say has really virtually got a total factory made system wherein you have a cold end and you have a hot end. Inside this, this is what happens. There is a compartment which separates the hot from the cold. The cold end takes back the room air, cools the room air here and sends back the cold air into the system. So basically you have a cold air cycle occurring here. The room air goes inside, gets cooled and then comes out here from the machine. This cooling device which is here the evaporator gets its fluid from the cooling equipment here. The compressor pulls back the refrigerant and transmits it onto the similar cooling coil at the hot end of the unit. Another fan blows out this hot air. This fan was blowing out the cold end and you have the three, system, three components the evaporator, the condenser and the compressor installed here to form the most basic system. This device is fully factory made, it is self contained and it combines a heat pickup and rejection in its single chases. The split air conditioner as I mentioned earlier is basically a window air conditioner cut into two halves. You have the air conditioned space and you have one half of it outside and one half of it inside. The half of it inside is obviously the cold half and the one that is outside is the hot half. The cold half is at a very low temperature 8 to 9 degrees. This 24 degrees heat flows into this at such a low temperature and this by a fluid from inside with a pipe connection transfers the media into the condenser. Component wise this is what you would see. You would see a enclosed space you would see a split air conditioner as two halves the cold half and the hot half which can be kept apart and linked together by piping. This would look like what you see here and this outdoor unit would look like what you see here. I have drawn two walls here in place of one wall. The implication is that a split air conditioner can be used in a room where there is no external wall. With the window air conditioner there was a constraint that there was no distance between the hot end and cold end. Here you can have a small distance between the cold end and the hot end. It can even be one room apart because the connection is by refrigerant pipes. These pipes have a limitation. Ideally they should not exceed 5 meters. Now this was as far as a basic split air conditioner is concerned. Now, a split air conditioner generally is available in very small capacities not exceeding maybe 2. Some manufacturers may make 3 ton machines. For bigger areas one has to look at something bigger and here the split air conditioner the indoor part of the unit becomes larger. It needs a powerful fan so that one can add duct work onto it and distribute the air. In other words what was a small room earlier if a bigger space is to be cooled you need a big unit with a more powerful fan and to distribute the cold air because you cannot dump it at one place and make this place over cool. You distribute the air by a duct system of duct work all over the air conditioned area. Again 
this is purely the heat absorbing part of it. This was at 8 or 9 degrees centigrade, 24 degrees moved heat into this place and this got rejected into the outdoor unit which is kept outside. Obviously, this is a bigger version of the old outdoor unit, this is a bigger version of the old indoor unit. In some formats, people prefer to have a floor mounted equipment. The ductible split which we saw schematically earlier was a ceiling suspended unit which can be hung in let us say a pantry or an area which is not very um, uh, likely to complain about noise from the equipment or in other words sometimes you might have a drain water drippage from the unit. So, these ductible splits are hung up in places like pantries or let us say some service passages where you know these small uh, disturbances can be overlooked. Uh, there are certain places where you know even such spaces are not available, it is better to go in for a split air conditioner which is floor mounted. Such equipment are available very easily and these are called package units. They are still not fully packaged because basically again there are two ends, both have got to be connected by piping at site and this interconnection is absolutely necessary at site only. So, in other words you cannot really call them packaged air conditioners because they are not totally self contained like a window air conditioner, but still uh, people prefer to call them packaged air conditioners because in some versions like water cooled machines they can be more or less self contained. A package air conditioner is basically like a split air conditioner and schematically this would look like this. This would be the envelope of the air conditioned space. You will have a small room earmark for this. This would become you might call it an air handling unit room. In this air handling unit the package unit is kept, a small quantity of fresh air is drawn into this room and uh, air is recirculated from the air conditioned space through a void over the fall ceiling and comes back to the air conditioner. So, basically again you have your evaporator, you have your condenser and the link between the two the compressor has now been installed here itself so that it is more protected from atmosphere. In other words the three friends the evaporator, the condenser and the compressor are still required, they are still there maybe in a different format, but without them there will be no air conditioning. Both the ductible splits and the uh, package units are available in water cooled versions. What I have been showing you is air cooled versions because the heat is rejected directly into ambient. In larger capacities or in places where water is available, one can reject heat into water. For instance, if you are on the river bank or if you have water available plentily and you can install a cooling tower, you can go in for systems which use water. Uh, water is a better coolant. So, heat rejection occurs a little better and in places like Delhi, in places like Nagpur which become very hot in summer 43, 45 degrees centigrade is an average temperature in places like Delhi. So, here if one has a water cooled uh, equipment, the condenser uh, temperature comes down dramatically reducing the heat on the compressor. The compressor would have earlier had to pump out uh, heat from let us say 24 degrees room temperature to 43 degrees ambient. In a water cooled version because the water is colder than the air particularly in places like Delhi, Nagpur where the wet bulb temperatures are very low, one can easily get water at about 28 degrees, 30 degrees. So, just imagine the pumping duty which was earlier from 24 to 40 is now complete in let us say 24 to 28, 24 to 30. So, the heat load on the compressor has come down, it works with smaller PDs, smaller pressure differences and its duty condition is lower, consumes less horsepower, becomes more efficient. Now, all these three versions that is the window air conditioner, split air conditioner and its package unit are called DX unit, direct expansion. Yes, I mean expansion. The Queen's English calls expansion as EXP whereas, the Americans who take credit for contributing the maximum towards air conditioning industry have uh, forthrightly called expansion as XP and XPA and SION. So, that is why the DX unit directly means direct expansion. Now, these DX units are available in certain capacities of maximum say about 20 tons commercially. What happens to applications which are larger? 
typically let us say a cinema theater, a church hall, a temple. These may call for something like a, a few hundred tons of cooling. Now just imagine putting 20 ton machines to meet this load. You need a, 10 of them or 12 of them and the fans may not still be powerful enough to reach the farther reaches of such big spaces. Now here one has the option of putting together the compressor, the condenser and the evaporator to form a DX system at site. These are tailor made systems and one could schematically look at them like this. In the DX system one needs all the three equipment like compressors, condensers and evaporators but these are good for single zone applications as I mentioned. Take a look at schematically a cinema theatre. I have shown a portion here with a stage and the auditorium. It needs cooling from an air handling unit which is the evaporator coil and a fan. This obviously is kept in a separate room and from here refrigerant pipes connected to a system of compressor condenser outside. So the compressor draws the refrigerant, raises its pressure, heats it up and puts it into the condenser coils where heat gets rejected outside. You can see hot air here. So this is kept at about maybe 70 degrees centigrade, 40 degree air goes inside, cools this coil and hot air gets rejected. This circuit of hot air and has absolutely nothing to do with this circuit which is drawing 24 degrees air, cooling it down by an 8 degree media to about 12 to 13 degrees when it is discharged here. Now the limitation of a DX system was that it is a single zone system. The moment you need a multi zone application like let us say you know multiple rooms to be cooled, a hospital, um, multiple floors in an office building, hotels, then these systems are called multi zone systems. You cannot cool air in a common air handling unit and put a part of it into every room and satisfy the requirements of every guest. Now here you need refrigerant to be piped to various zones. That becomes rather difficult. So refrigerant do not lend themselves to be apportioned into small portions. So the secret behind using a multi-zone system is to make the DX system cool water and then distribute water like any plumbing specialist would do to various zones that need cooling. Let us look at how it looks. The red circuit here you have the three friends together, the condenser and the evaporator and the compressor. This is the one that is the basic refrigeration circuit. What does it do? This it makes this blue circuit. There is a pump which picks up the cooling from the evaporator and it is available in this line as cold water which can be piped to let us say something like a thousand units here. I have schematically shown only three for the sake of convenience but this could be room one, room two, room three. In a five star hotel this could be a few hundred rooms, the public spaces all put together and the common water from all of them goes back into the pump and gets into the evaporator. So this is another chilled water cycle which is established by itself going through the evaporator. Invariably in such large applications it is a water cooled application. So the water cooled condenser needs cold water from a cooling tower which is drawn by this pump and recirculated here. So this blue circuit is the heat rejection part, this blue circuit is the heat absorption part and this is the magic item which moves heat from here to here. Now by doing this you have cooling available to be used in as I said multiple zones. These zones could be like this. They could be in the bottom of a multi-story building, let us say the basement where you have these three friends together. From here cold water is piped up a riser to say multiple floors, one floor here, one floor there, one floor still higher. I have for convenience sake only projected two floors. Now each of these is a cooling uh, zone. This could be room 1, 2, 3, 4 in a hotel. This could be ward 1, 2, 3, 4 in a hospital. It could be a cabin in one of the floors of a multi-story building which is used for office purposes. Thank you.